Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, you're gonna get an update on all my pets. I try to do these videos at least once a year to update you on new family members, as well as to talk about animals that have passed away. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more animal content and you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. First to start off this video, I want to give a shout out to Exotic Nutrition, a pet supply company that supports this channel. I've been using Exotic Nutrition for about a decade for my pets. And then I started my channel and Exotic Nutrition became a huge support for my channel and what I'm trying to do on this channel, which is educate people about animals. Exotic Nutrition offers a wide range of products for lots of animals such as food for rabbits, treats for chinchillas, sugar glider staple diets, packaged insects for opossums and hedgehogs, and so much more. This is what I feed my pets. I highly recommend it. So be sure to shop at exognutrition.com for your pets and use my coupon code for 10% off your entire order. Check the description for more information. Before I start showing you guys the animals, I just wanted to point out that owning this many animals is not the right thing for everyone. The animals take a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of dedication. YouTube is my full-time job, so I spend all day taking care of my animals, interacting with them, and making sure that they are happy and healthy. However, even before I started doing YouTube, I did work from home. This isn't something that just happened to me. Some of these animals I've had for over 18 years. All of the animals get veterinary care, environmental enrichment, and species appropriate diets. Now a few other things that I wanted to point out is that I am 27 years old. I've been married to my husband for seven years. And I like to point that out because a lot of people do come on here and tell me that I am super spoiled by my parents and never gonna find a man. So there's that. And then one last thing that I think is also really important to point out is that my animals are not a collection, so please don't call them that. They are living, breathing beings that are intelligent, they are emotional, and I don't like for people to act like they are some sort of collection. Um, that's something I think that you can fold up and put in a drawer when you're done with it. Uh, this is something that takes a lot of work on a daily basis. Also, if you guys do have any questions about the animals that you're seeing in this video or uh, more about my life, just go ahead and ask me down below in the comments or follow me on Instagram. But please be polite, please don't attack me. I'm willing to have a conversation with you guys as long as I'm also approached in a kind way. So yeah, let me know what you guys wanna know more about. Now the first animals I want to show you are my dogs. I have six dogs. Caspian is the dog that I've had the longest and he was a service dog for me for six years. I recently retired him about a year ago and you can find more videos all about that. It wasn't because he was too old to be a service dog or anything like that. It was actually just that I had gotten a lot better. So if you want to know more, be sure to check out those videos. Evie is my oldest dog and she is a rescue from a high kill shelter in New Mexico. She is a chihuahua. Luna is a Pembroke Welsh Corgi with a tail. Now I'm really against docking dogs. Docking means cutting the tail off of the dog. This is usually done at a very young age when the dogs are born. And this is often done on breeds like Pembroke Welsh Corgis because they are almost always, about 95% of the time, born with tails. It is very difficult to breed for natural bobs in certain breeds like this. Uh, it can even cause health issues if they try to breed for this. So instead, breeders will just dock the tails and sometimes even say that the puppies were born that way. Next is Clark and he is a Blue Merle Pembroke Cardigan Welsh Corgi. This is often referred to as the American Corgi because it is becoming a popular breed in America and really goes back to the dog's original roots where they were one breed at a certain time in history. And Luna and Clark are the mother and father to my next two dogs, Rowan and Bruce, who are also American Corgis. Rowan is a tri Brindle Corgi and then Bruce is a Red Merle Corgi. I'm super passionate about the Corgi breed. You can learn more about that uh, in the description of the video. I will link some information that I have on it. Personally, I am not a breeder. I had one litter, they all went to family and friends. I think a breeder really qualifies as somebody who breeds on a regular basis and does make um, somewhat of a profit on the dogs. So that doesn't really describe me, but I do have my dog's health tested and I breed for health, personality, and color as well. But there are really important things to me when it comes to breeding the dogs. 
And so it's not something that I do all the time uh, just because it would be so hard for me to actually let go of the puppies to strangers. My dogs are so important to me and just a huge part of my life. I used to go everywhere with Caspian, grocery shopping, out with friends, traveling, movies. So I have a huge attachment to him. We also take the dogs to corgi meetups once a month, uh, take them to dog parks. They sleep around the bed or on the bed. They have a big yard to play in when I'm out of the house. And then they do follow me all around the farm getting plenty of exercise. And some of them do herd our goats and alpacas when we need help with them. And they are all on a raw food diet, which you can learn more about by checking out some of the videos in the description down below. I did a whole video about feeding these dogs and what I give them throughout an entire week. So I kind of go over the different meals and stuff that I prepare for them. Next is another pet that requires just as much attention as a dog, my mini pig, Petunia. Petunia is a Juliana mini pig. I've done tons of videos on mini pigs because of all of the misconceptions surrounding them, their care, and especially their size. Pigs are extremely intelligent and emotional, but aren't as small as a lot of people seem to think that they are. And being that Petunia is a rescue, I do try to spread as much knowledge as I can about these pigs. Then up next are my two cats. This is Portia, a male Lynx Point Siamese cat, and Lily, a female rad dog cat. Both are rescues. Portia was found on the side of the road and Lily was adopted from animal control. My cats are spayed and neutered and do live inside full time. Next, I wanna introduce you to my birds, some of which require a lot of attention. I have five individual birds that are very tame and require a lot of attention and then six different flocks of birds that I care for collectively as a group. I'm going to briefly go over each, but for more details, you can definitely check out the videos down below in the description so that you can learn more about the birds. First, there is Barry, who is a huge, huge part of my life. He is a rose-breasted cockatoo or gala, depending on where you're from. He has a lifespan of over 70 years, and I truly hope that he will be with me for most of my life. That would just be so amazing. This bird is probably as big of a commitment as a child would be. They are very intelligent, very emotional, and like I said, very long term. I have two other parrots, Cairo and Evan, who are green sheep conures. Cairo is very affectionate with me, uh, Evan less so. Evan is actually a rescue, but all three of us hang out watching a lot of Netflix. Sometimes they want to cuddle, sometimes they just want to play with their toys. Next we have Indigo and Gemini, my two peacocks. These young boys are almost a year, so they don't have all their mature feathers yet. I raised them from when they were a few days old, so they're very attached to me. You can see them grow from cute babies to awkward adolescents to beautiful young adults by watching their video. And then let's go over my six flocks. I call them flocks because these birds are for the enjoyment of observing and most do not enjoy physical interaction. There are a few exceptions that we will go over, but their care is done as a group instead of individually. First there are my two parakeets or budgies, depends again where you're from. This is Skye and Cameo. Then I have my canaries and finches. And then outside are my lane ducks. There are four females and one male that was supposed to be a female. Duck eggs are very healthy for you. Caspian, my dog, is allergic to chicken eggs, so he benefits a lot from being able to have the duck eggs. I also have lane hens, whose eggs I share with my family. They are a free-range flock. They sleep inside of a beautiful hen house provided by Overeasy Chicken Coop and free-range throughout the day. And these are eight hens. Six of them are Buff or Binton, two of them are Cochins, and then they do have two roosters who live with them. These two roosters just decided that uh, these were their girls and they always stay together taking care of each other. And very conveniently, they do lay their eggs inside of the hen house. 
These hens do sometimes enjoy some cuddles, so you can actually go out and pick them up, but mainly they do entertain themselves on our huge farm. And then lastly for the birds is my freedom flock. A freedom flock means that these birds live on the farm completely free, 24 seven, running around in the fields, swimming in the pond, roosting in the trees at night. The flock includes peafowl, guineas, chickens, ducks, and one goose. The goose is the one that actually likes individual attention, more like needs it. She loves to be picked up off the ground and cuddled. The birds are provided with food, but for the most part, they do eat what they find on the farm, which is actually an excellent pest control. We don't really keep an exact count on these birds as the number does fluctuate. Hawks will kill some. During the spring, new babies are always hatching. Often people will dump unwanted birds at our farm, uh, just throw them over the fence and drive away. And just things like that, so you never really know exactly what to expect. Now let's go over the 11 reptiles that I own. This will be brief, but there is a longer video just on my reptiles that goes over each one individually. First, there is Hank. He is a sulcata tortoise, which is the third largest species in the world. He was in my first YouTube video and he was just so tiny. He's a lot bigger now, but still has a long way to go. We have two bearded dragons, Regal and Jar, who do not live together, by the way. I have three snakes, a banana ball python named Jasper, another ball python that is a blue-eyed Lucy named Onyx, and then a sand boa named Wyatt. I have five geckos, Nyko the leopard gecko, Rango the giant day gecko, Maui the gargoyle gecko, Merlin the crested gecko, and Nova, the Halmahara Gecko. Now I used to have two fish tanks, but after my beta fish died, I decided to downgrade to just one tank, so I moved the fish, snails, and plants to the 60 gallon tank. I probably need to trim these plants. As you can see, it's really grown a lot. I only have a few small fish. Next are my amphibians, which I only have two of. They are my marble salamander, bulbazar, and charmander, my spotted salamander. Now let's call the next group of animals the small furries. First are my chinchillas, who I've had for a really long time. They are ivory, flint, and cinder. Then my guinea pigs, Twinkie and Empanada. I have three rabbits. Snow and Belle are my outdoor rabbits. These were given to me by people who didn't want them any longer. They aren't very friendly and they don't like a, a lot of human contact, but they live very happily in a 40 square foot yard, being able to dig tunnels and feel like they are wild rabbits. Merida, my third rabbit, is a very spoiled pet who likes humans, but not other rabbits and she lives inside in her clearly loved pen, which is for dogs, rabbits, or other pets. Check out the description for more information because this pen is beautiful. Merida is a Netherland dwarf rabbit and she's probably my easiest pet to care for. Such a sweet animal. And you can learn more about the rabbits and why they have the certain lifestyles that they do by checking the description because I do have a video that answers a lot of questions about them. Now I'll be introducing you to my hedgehog. Quill is over four years old. I think he is considered a pepper hedgehog. I might be wrong. Quill is an elderly hedgehog, but he still has a lot of energy and is a really healthy, happy little guy. He's just so sweet. And then I have four sugar gliders. Thea, who I've had the longest. She's eight years old. And then Bindi and Arlo, who are about a year and a half. And Romeo, who's um, over six months now. I got him at six months and he was, Let's see, I think that was about three months ago. And lastly for the small furries is Theodore and Pepper, the prairie dogs. Next, I'll be introducing you to the farm animals. These animals' daily care is usually done collectively as a herd. 
Every so often, each one needs individual care, for example, when we shear each of the alpacas, but daily care is usually done by group, so it's really not as difficult as it might seem. Let's talk about the alpacas and llamas first. In case you didn't know, we're alpaca farmers as well. We have show quality animals that we use for fiber. But most importantly, these guys really are pets and some of my favorite pets. Males and females do have to be kept separate at all times. So let's introduce the males first. This is Storm, a male llama that is the herd guardian for the male alpacas and goats, uh, which you will get to meet soon. He protects them from predators. He is a Suri llama. Suri describes his hair type, basically. All of our other llamas and alpacas are called wakaya. Then we have Camilo who was born on our farm. He is a beautiful male with excellent fiber quality and will be used for breeding. Then there is Eclipse who was born on the 2016 Eclipse. He's a new addition to our farm and he's also gonna be part of our breeding program as well. Next are the girls. Willow and Mesquite are the two llamas that guard the female alpacas. Willow is actually Storm's mom, and Willow is the black and white one, Misky is the brown and white one. These two girls are very good at their job, and they did actually defend the girls against a very bad attack that we had back in December. Now the female alpacas include Plata, who is our oldest girl and was an import from Peru. Peekaboo, who looks just like a wild vicuña, which is a cousin to the alpacas. Rose, her daughter, was born on our farm. Hattie is our solid black alpaca. Audrey, who's one of my favorite colors, and just her brown and gray spots, just so beautiful. Mocha has the biggest hair and also is the tallest. Amelia is a little disabled, but has really been able to thrive here on the farm. And then there's Kelly, who is the silliest and I think most awkward one we have. And now I'll be introducing you to the goats. These are my Nigerian dwarf goats that come from show winning parents so they do have papers. We don't show them ourselves because we won't cut the horns off of our goats and that is uh, something that's a requirement which I don't agree with. This is Blue. He is our only billy goat. He's kept separate from the herd unless we plan on breeding. Goats enjoy company, so we do try to keep him with Wesley, who's a weather, but sometimes uh, he gets a little too moody and has to be kept alone. But he does have Petunia and a flock of ducks for company. And it's really weird, he loves his ducks and spends a lot of time licking them. The herd of goats is always together, and that includes Shiva, Buttercup, Bailey, Penny, Elsa, Panda, and Nebel. Now lastly are the horses. We usually have about eight horses or more on the farm, but I'll just be introducing you to the ones that are mine. First is Rainbow, who I've had for 18 years, or is it 19? I think it might be 19 now. She is a BLM Mustang, meaning that she is wild caught. Then I have Shakespeare, who is a Welsh pony, and two minis that I've had for many years, Pearl and Feather. For all the animals you saw today in this video, you can watch more videos about them to learn more about them or follow me on Instagram or Twitter to ask questions about them. All of the animals you saw in the video are just all very, very important to us. They all get really good diets, they get environmental enrichment, veterinary care. It's really important for us that the animals are cared for and that they're happy and healthy. So if you have any questions about them, Instead of you know being rude or anything like that, just please ask me and I am more than willing to talk about my animals. That's, that's why I have a YouTube channel is because I love talking about them. Just, um, yeah, reach out, don't be rude, just, you know, let's talk. Now we'll be remembering some of the animals that passed away over the last year, uh, some of the animals that we lost. I wanna start with Daisy. And this was my corgi puppy that passed away last April. It was one of the most devastating pet deaths that I ever had to deal with. On top of her being poisoned, our corgis ended up getting parvo at the same time. Luckily, they had been vaccinated, which really helped with them being able to survive, but it was so much to deal with in such a short period of time. I have a video about parvo and vaccinations if you wanna check it out. 
A lot of people don't understand how it works, so please check the description for that. Uh, a lot of people think that once they have the vaccine that their dogs are safe and that's not necessarily always the case. But losing Daisy was very hard on all of us. Uh, it was also really hard on Clark. He cried and looked for her for a really long time afterwards. And uh, this one was just one of the ones that hit us the hardest. We also lost Spinnaker this year. He was our show winning male alpaca. He was killed during the dog attack on our farm in December and that's when our farm guardian Lycan a Great Pyrenees was also killed. Uh, this um, was all by a pack of pit bulls and this was another very tragic loss that was extremely difficult to cope with. Remy the cockatiel also recently passed away. Her health seemed to go up and down. She had quite a few visits to the vet over the last year. She didn't seem to have an illness, but her energy would go and her weight was difficult to keep up. Eventually she went down and didn't recover and she passed away in her sleep. The vet believes it was probably a genetic issue. She was such a sweet animal and so I really, really miss her. And then Calvin, my crested gecko. This loss I very much blame on myself. I had him in a travel cage while I was cleaning his cage and he escaped on me. I didn't close the lid right. It, it was just such a stupid reason to lose an animal. Uh, but I do want to show people we all make mistakes. Uh, we're all very capable of making very dumb mistakes. BC the sugar glider also passed away this year. She was an inbred sugar glider and they usually do have a lot of health problems and pass away young. That's why I always recommend buying lineage if you don't plan on adopting. I also recently lost my hedgehog Wilbur. He wasn't as old as Quill, but he developed a neurological disease and I had to have him euthanized by the vet because these symptoms had gotten really bad. It was a really hard decision to make, uh, but I had to do what was right for him and think about his quality of life, which had really gone down. We lost a few other animals to age and while it's hard to lose a pet, it's much easier to grieve and accept it when the cause is old age. That's the most you can hope for. Here are the pets that passed away from old age, most of which died recently in 2019, which is another reason why I wanted to make an updated video. And that included the gerbils, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, my mice, Pinky and the Brain, my guinea pig, Cupcake, my parakeet, Bonita, and Joan and Stella, the rats. Now I didn't post about each one of these pets on social media. I think there's really only like two that I th think I posted on on social media, but I wanted to grieve for them privately. It's just easier that way. And being on YouTube, I've had to figure out how to balance my personal life and also balance YouTube. And there are certain things I've had to realize are better to cope with like on my own with my family before putting it on social media. Then three animals from the last All My Pets video that you didn't see here today are Clarissa, the alpaca, and I think the two baby boy goats might have also been in that video. Clarissa, I had mentioned in other videos, was very aggressive with our herd and we had to keep her separated. Now, alpacas can't be kept alone, so since we couldn't integrate her into the herd, we did find another home for her, and she's actually much happier there. I'm, I'm really glad um, we are able to find a home where she is with other alpacas that she can't bully and just is able to get along with them better and with someone who takes such good care of their animals. And then the two uh, baby boy goats, they were very unexpected and they were a surprise birth. They were actually given to a family friend. Um, this was actually a result of a loose goat getting onto our farm, which was an unfortunate situation, uh, but they're cared for now and they are pets and they're living with another family. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's it for today's video. And don't forget to subscribe to me here and also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.